This video discusses the most important theorem in the book, which are the Cantor's diagonal argument and Cantor theorem, which led to the conclusion that C, the cardinality of real numbers, is 2 to the power left null and is larger than a left null, the cardinality of the natural numbers. First, I'll discuss Cantor's diagonal argument. Cantor's diagonal argument starts by considering real numbers in a unit interval as a set T of all infinite sequences of binary digits. Assume that T is countable. Then we can list all elements from T in a row. But there is always S, an element of T which is not present in the listing, which is constructed by choosing the ith digit complementary to the ith digit in SI, which will correspond to no SI in the listing. For example, the first digit in S1 is 0. Thus, let the first digit of S be 1, which is complementary to 0. The second digit in S2 is 1. Thus, let the second digit of S be 0. The third digit in S3 is 0. Thus, let the third digit of S be 1, dot dot dot. Then, S is different from any SI in the list. Different from S1 in the first digit. Different from S2 in the second digit. Different from S3 in the third digit, dot dot dot. Thus, there is always S, an element of T, which is not present in the list. This contradicts the original assumption T being countable. Thus, T is uncountable by contradiction. Therefore, C, which is called T, which is 2 to the power of no by arithmetic, is uncountable. Thus, C equals 2 to the power of no and is larger than Aleph no. Second, Cantor theorem. The theorem is two lines long and the proof is three lines long. The theorem is let F be a map from set A to its power set PA. Then F mapping A to PA is not surjective. Thus, card PA being larger than card A holds true for any set A. The proof is, in order to show card PA is larger than card A, we need to show that there is only injective function but no surjective function between A and PA. We need to demonstrate the existence of a subset A that is not equal to fx for any x which is an element of A. Consider the set B whose element x is an element of fx. Suppose f is surjective. Then there exists epsilon which is an element of A such that f epsilon equals B. But by construction, if epsilon is an element of B, then it means epsilon is not an element of f epsilon which equals B. Therefore, this is a contradiction. Thus, f cannot be surjective. On the other hand, function g mapping a to p a defined as x to itself is injective. Therefore, car p a is larger than card A. The concept of the set B is rather abstract. Thus, I'll show B more visually. Set B whose element X is not an element of Fx is called Cantor's diagonal set and you'll see why. Suppose you have a list of Fi which are subsets of natural numbers. F1 is an empty set, F2 is a set of all natural numbers, F3 even numbers, F4 
odd numbers dot 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 then make a subset B by having X there is not an element in Fx which is the definition of set B thus because there is no one as an element in F1 one is included as an element in B that is what is meant by B whose element X is not an element of Fx there is 2 as an element in F2 thus 2 is not included as an element in B there is no 3 as an element in F3 thus 3 is included as an element in B da, da, da. then B is different from any Fi in the list different from F1 in the first element different from F2 in the second element different from F3 in the third element dot 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 thus there is always subset B or PA which is not present in the list then you note the similarity between this contours diagonal set B in the contours theorem and S in the contours diagonal argument which can be seen more clearly by changing the presence or absence of each element in the set as 1 or 0. Then Fi becomes a list of binary digits and B becomes a number of binary digits, ith digit complementary to ith digit of the set Fi. The first digit in F1 is a 0, thus the first digit in B is 1. The second digit in F2 is 1. Thus, the second digit in B is 0. The third digit in F3 is 0. Thus, the third digit in B is 1. Da, da, da. Therefore, the set B, contour diagonal set in the proof in contour theorem, is S in the contour diagonal argument. In other words, contour theorem is another expression of contour's diagonal argument. From this contour theorem, many paradoxes follow. Car PA is larger than card A. If card A equals n, then card PA equals 2 to the power n. And we know that 2 to the power n is larger than n for any positive integer n from simple arithmetic. If card n equals aleph null, then card pn equals 2 to the power aleph null. Because contour theorem holds true in infinity, it follows 2 to the power aleph null is larger than aleph null. And define path number 1 as card pn which is 2 to the power left null and define path i plus 1 as car p path i which is 2 to the power path i then path 2 is larger than path 1 and path i plus 1 is larger than path i thus aleph null is smaller than path 1 is smaller than path 2 Da, 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 leading to the conclusion that there are many sizes of infinity and there is no greatest, greatest infinite cardinality. Then I'll show the fallacy in the Cantor's diagonal argument. Cantor's diagonal argument assumed that T is countable and we can list all elements from T in a row. But there is a fatal error in the Cantor's diagonal argument. The assumption in the proof that T is countable of phosphate the fact that T or SI is infinite. The fallacy was that you completed the listing SI when you should not. Because you cannot complete the listing SI as cannot exist. Cantor tried to show 
c equal curl t, which is 2 to the power aleph null and is larger than aleph null. But counter diagonal argument does not hold in infinity, thus fail to show 2 to the power aleph null is larger than aleph null. And then I show a fallacy in the counter theorem. This famous proof of Fermat's law theorem by Andrew Wiles is 109 pages long. There is a recent stir that ABC conjecture is finally proven, but some experts say that the author, a Japanese mathematician, Shinichi Mojizuki, failed to fix fatal flaw in solution. This paper is 600 pages long. Well, both proofs are very long so that there may be an error lurking somewhere. But the proof of counter theorem is just three lines long. How this proof can have an error? Let's look at the proof meticulously. The proof considers a subset B of PA whose element X is not an element of Fx. Because we assume surjection, our subset B has to be in Fx when it cannot be in the Fx. Thus, this contradicts the fact that there is surjection. Thus, PA has a larger cardinality than A. However, if B does not exist, then this logic of contradiction does not hold. Set B, whose element X is not an element of Fx, is called as Cantor's diagonal set. In infinity, where I, the number of elements, is infinite, the list of Fi has to be infinite because I is infinite. Therefore, B cannot exist because Fi continues to infinity. I discussed the similarity between this set B, counter diagonal set in the counter theorem, and S in the counter diagonal argument, which can be seen more clearly by changing the presence or absence of each element in the set as 1 or 0. Thus, Cantor theorem is Cantor's diagonal argument, and as in Cantor's diagonal argument, it does not hold in infinity because the listing of Fi continues and B cannot exist. Cantor, who defined comparing sizes in infinity by one to one pairing, made a fatal error in assumption in Cantor's diagonal argument and counter theorem. He should have considered that the listing is infinite and cannot be completed. Assuming completing the listing, that is, listing all elements, is like assuming the largest natural number n. Finding a number or subset listing plus 1 after assuming the listing is complete is like constructing a larger natural number n plus 1 after assuming the largest natural number n. In this way, he was led to a wrong conclusion that there is a larger cardinality than the listing. Probably he believed that c is larger than aleph null. Real numbers can be expressed in infinite sequences of binary digits, thus c equals 2 to the power aleph null, thus c equals 2 to the power aleph null, which is larger than aleph null. Therefore, I suspect that he was blinded to see the error in his arguments, because they fitted so nicely into his belief, even though he was troubled by other paradoxes that follow. There cannot be b in infinity. There cannot be B does not mean B is an empty set. It means B does not exist. Therefore, 
there is no contradiction in surjection, and A and PA should have the same cardinality in infinity. Card N equals card PN, that is, RF0 equals 2 to the power RF0. Corollary of RF0 equals 2 to the power RF0 is as follows. Beth 1 was defined as car Pn, which is 2 to the power RF0, which is RF0 now. Then Beth 2 equals Beth 1, and by induction, Beth i is Beth 1 for any integer i. Thus, there are only two sizes of infinity, RF0 and C. Thus, all the paradoxes of infinitely many sizes of infinity are resolved. If you want to look at the full discussion, you may watch part 1, which discusses many other paradoxes present in the current theory of infinity, and part 2, which discusses fallacies in reasoning leading to those paradoxes and rectifies those counterintuitive paradoxes. Part 1 is 80 minutes long, and part 2 is 93 minutes long, but you can move to the video which corresponds to the chapter by clicking the corresponding timestamps in the note. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you find an error in my argument, please contact me by email. Thank you very much.